today I will talk. I will tell you about uh, Claudia's platform. Uh, so let's start. So today's ag agenda is uh, uh, the following. I will show you the uh, some information about architecture of uh, Claudia's platform. Uh, I will tell you about the data that we are collecting and sharing to uh, our users and uh, tell you something about the tools that we are using and you can use for uh, browsing the data, selecting and uh, processing the F observation products. And also at the end, I will show you how to start the virtual machines uh, and uh, how to use it. Uh, I will try to uh, answer your questions if you have uh, on, on the chat, but uh, uh, if uh, probably the best way would be if I, uh, I would answer these questions uh, at, the, at the end, or my colleague probably will uh, try to answer this question during the, uh, the webinar. So first, what is uh, Claudia's platform? Uh, our platform consists of uh, uh, servers and uh, data storage uh, computes. Uh, we are collecting the data um, from the... Just a moment, I'll show you. The, so we use uh, uh, servers to, uh, to process the uh, data, uh, so every user can uh, start his or her own virtual machine and have access to your data that we are collecting uh, from uh, from uh, uh, European uh, from ESA uh, uh, repositories. Uh, Every virtual machine can have access to block storage and object storage. And you can, of course, make backups of uh, the data that you process. Uh, the image here shows that we are constantly collecting data from various uh, hubs. Uh, so Sci-Hub, uh, 5P uh, hub, uh, ECM, WF, Elmetsat, and all this data is uh, stored on uh, in our data repository. It is uh, we have about 17 petabytes of data already stored, and uh, every day we collect uh, several terabytes of new uh, data from satellite products. This uh, products you can access uh, using various uh, protocols like S3FS or NFS, and you can also use uh, OGC. Uh, you can set up your own WMS server, and uh, you can uh, collect the data using uh, the existing uh, WMS servers as well. Uh, now let's uh, talk about the data that we are collecting. Uh, we have both uh, uh, free and paid high-resolution imagery. The free uh, data is the data collected uh, from ESA, uh, European Space Agency hubs. Uh, so this is Sentinel-1A. Uh, 2A, 3A, Sentinel 5P, also Landsat 578 and NVSAT. And depending on the products, uh, some of them are uh, full archive, some of them are stored uh, uh, for six months, and after six months they are deleted from our repository. But you can, uh, some of the uh, older data you can order using our uh, tools that I will tell you, uh, uh, I'll describe a little bit later. 
And uh, we have also uh, uh, contracts with uh, uh, Chinese and Kazakhstan um, companies. So we have also uh, a very high uh, resolution uh, products, satellite products that can be ordered uh, on demand. Uh, this is uh, this has to be um, agreed with our sales department. And also uh, Copernicus services data and some other collections. Uh, this data is uh, available from our virtual machines. So generally speaking, everybody uh, who is registered to Claudia's can have free access to um, all the satellite data um, delivered by European Space Agency and uh, they are um, available um, both by the browser and uh, directly uh, uh, as a file system on, on the virtual machines. So uh, the, um, the system is like this, that we collect data uh, to, the, um, to the big storage, which is uh, uh, maintained by open source uh, software called CEF. Uh, and uh, uh, any additional data that you uh, can order, can, will be stored on, on a special big cache uh, and kept uh, for several months, depending on the capacity that it occupies on the cache. And you can access this data using NFS protocol, S3 protocol, and access uh, it uh, using WMS and uh, WMTS and WCS. This is, uh, this is done by our partner uh, who is maintaining the Sentinel uh, Hub software. Uh, so now let's talk about the tools for uh, data processing and Earth observation products. Uh, I will switch uh, my screen to the um, I will switch my screen to the browser. Okay. So this is the main uh, area that you uh, uh, that you can enter when you uh, try to find information about uh, about Crodias. So this is the main page. Uh, you can see from this uh, place you can access uh, various functions and uh, um, applications. Here in, uh, on the, in the menu, you can see the information about Claudia's, about our uh, uh, computing resources and data processing pricing plans. Uh, and uh, here in tools, um, we have your browser, your finder, and um, you can access the cloud dashboard, the place where you uh, manage the virtual virtual resources and you can use also uh, jupyter hub for your uh, processing that uh, you can directly uh, make some some processing on on uh, uh, satellite products without starting your own uh, vm so this uh, jupyter hub is the tool that you can use for free and you can, uh, uh, for, uh, in various other menus, you can see uh, this is uh, one place that I would recommend. Uh, this is frequently asked questions. This is uh, the repository of uh, the various articles about uh, how to use our 
resources, uh, or how to deal with uh, some problems that you encounter during uh, uh, starting and maintaining the virtual machines. Uh, it is also categorized uh, on uh, various subjects, so for instance, subjects uh, uh, regarding the uh, accessing EO data or uh, regarding the access to OpenStack. Uh, uh, OpenStack is the software that is used for uh, managing all the virtual resources. Uh, so first I will show you the finder. Uh, you can access the finder, uh, finder from uh, tools menu uh, and clicking on EO finder. You can you will see the following dashboard and uh, with this dashboard you can uh, choose what kind of collection just a moment i will make the screen a little bit bigger uh, so that uh, uh, the fonts are a little bit big, bigger uh, so, for instance, if you want to look for, uh, let's say, Sentinel-2 uh, uh, products, uh, you can choose what kind of processing uh, level you want. Uh, you can also uh, filter some other parameters of this product. You can uh, choose the dates of uh, when this product uh, were observed so for instance uh, for instance here since uh, uh, since June uh, till today and if I click on search then I get the list of uh, uh, products if I click on the uh, so here I can see that uh, it is showing uh, first 10 products out of about uh, uh, 1.4 million uh, of uh, total results uh, found in the States and uh, uh, for Sentinel-2. Uh, you can click on the on the product and see whether uh, how it uh, uh, some, gen some uh, parameters like uh, metadata that is connected with this product. So you can browse here. You can also download this product uh, yourself. And uh, the only thing that is that if you if you want to download the product, you need to log in. So uh, now I'm browsing the products uh, as anonymous uh, user, so not yet logged in. And uh, here in help, you can also see some additional information, how to access these products uh, uh, in um, some other ways, like using the API. If you uh, want to process uh, and find uh, more data, then a browser will be not uh, enough. Uh, then you can use the API of the finder. Uh, you can also uh, choose some selection by hand. So, for instance, if you look for some products that are uh, in Africa, you can uh, use polygon selection. So, you can point the uh, area that you are interested in and then search again. And it will show only these products that are covered by uh, this area. So this is the main, uh, some general main information about the, uh, this finder. And uh, if you want uh, to look for um, some, uh, you can also search uh, using a search phrase. Uh, so uh, like here, the, the example was to show winter in Quebec and it will uh, also uh, try to find the products that are connected somehow 
the metadata is uh, filled with uh, for, for these products. Uh, the next uh, important product is uh, your browser. Uh, your browser is uh, mm, uh, it's done, is made by uh, the company that we are cooperating with. It's uh, called Synergize. You can see uh, the logo of uh, Synergize here uh, in, on our main page. And uh, using Synergize, you can uh, also look for uh, several collections and uh, you can make uh, some basic, uh, uh, sometimes even more advanced uh, uh, processing uh, for the product. So you can choose the place uh, on the map. So, for instance, let's see, you know, I'm looking for some products in Canada and uh, I can collect, I can choose the collections that I want to uh, check. So, for instance, Sentinel 2 and 3 and then search, click search. Of course, I chose the, the this is showing the latest uh, month, uh, the, the products during the latest month, but you can also choose other dates. And uh, now I can see that uh, they uh, it, it is showing the products that are covering this area. So I can uh, click on some of them and I can make some uh, visualization of this product. It, uh, it sometimes takes a little bit time. Just a moment, I check once again. Depending on, on the um, on the product uh, visualization can be sometimes just a moment. Okay, so this is uh, one of the example of visualization of uh, certain products. Uh, uh, glued together uh, to make uh, some bigger picture and you can choose uh, information uh, you can ch choose some filters additional filters but I'm not data specialist so uh, I think this uh, uh, more detailed presentation will be covered by uh, other webinar And uh, now I will uh, show you the uh, way to access ah, the, one more uh, tool is Jupyter Hub. Uh, but Jupyter Hub you can use uh, using uh, being uh, logged in. So I will now uh, use my credentials. Uh, of my sample user. And when I log in as uh, this sample user, I will uh, have the service uh, started. That is, the, um, every user gets uh, containerized uh, Jupyter uh, Jupyter virtual machine and you can uh, use some uh, you can use some uh, for instance Python uh, scripts to uh, to access the data and to um, uh, to process this data this is the very simple uh, script in Python showing how to 
download one of the products to the cache of uh, this Jupyter, Jupyter uh, notebook. Uh, and th this uh, will also be presented uh, more deeply in, oh, in fact, it was presented already, I think, but uh, probably it can be uh, presented once again by uh, uh, data, our data specialists. Okay, I'm coming back to the main page of uh, Crodias. And now uh, I will show you uh, access to the cloud dashboard. So clicking on cloud dashboard, I will be redirected to uh, the uh, page uh, uh, of, uh, it's called Horizon. This page uh, is uh, the main page for accessing the virtual uh, machines, virtual storage. And uh, as, as I was, uh, if I'm logged in, uh, if I, you, I can use uh, uh, two methods of logging in. I can use either OpenID Connect or Keystone Credentials. Keystone is uh, the name of the um, authorizing uh, server of OpenStack. And OpenID Connect, lets me uh, connect using my credentials, which I uh, already uh, entered during logging into Finder. So this browser already remembers my uh, credentials. So I'm logged in as John Doe uh, now to my virtual resources. And this is the uh, starting page of Horizon. Uh, from here I can uh, create new virtual machines. So for instance, uh, these are some uh, virtual machines that I, I have already created some, uh, some time ago. I can uh, choose uh, various projects. Uh, that is, I can create uh, new projects that, uh, uh, that in these projects, the uh, resources are separated uh, one from another. So, for instance, I can choose the uh, project uh, that is with access to uh, EO uh, repository. So, for instance, I have some virtual resources here that, that are uh, virtual machines. And uh, so one way to create uh, virtual resources is uh, from, from, from this uh, page. Uh, this page is a little bit more flexible than uh, buying resources from the main page of Crowdias. Uh, so for instance, if I want to uh, launch a new instance, uh, I click on launch instance choose the name. So for instance, webinar, choose source. Uh, of course, all this information is available on our uh, main page in uh, among frequently asked questions. So you can, uh, you can find this information here. Uh, th that is the uh, information in, in the frequently asked questions. Uh, and now I will just briefly show you some example how to create a virtual machine. Uh, I can choose the image. Uh, and uh, here are the various uh, images that are available in, uh, in our repository. So uh, mainly we have uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, and also uh, Windows servers. We have also dedicated um, software uh, like ArcGIS, uh, which is licensed, and uh, there is also OSGO Live, and uh, there is also an image uh, uh, for CentOS 7 and Cent4 Cup. By the way, the uh, webinar for uh, how to use Cent4 Cup uh, will be tomorrow, so. I uh, invited, uh, invite you to, to enter the webinar tomorrow. 
So now I can choose the image. Let's say I uh, choose the image, uh, simple Ubuntu image. So I click here. Now the this step is for uh, choosing the image. So I already chose the image. Now I can use the flavor. And the flavors are various uh, uh, sizes of <clears throat> virtual machines. So let's say I choose the, the small one. Next step is to choose the network. Mm, we have, uh, first of all, access to, to the EO data and uh, uh, the necessary step is to, uh, to add uh, one of the uh, private networks. Each project uh, can have uh, one or more uh, private networks. This is connected to uh, the ability to create uh, virtual uh, resources on uh, virtual virtual network uh, resources uh, and these networks can be separated or can be virtually uh, connected uh, to each other uh, so um, let's say i choose the private uh, network external two and access to your data uh, network ports this step uh, is not necessary to choose uh, this one is uh, uh, very important because uh, mm, using security group is uh, like uh, opening is in fact is uh, allowing uh, uh, some ports uh, uh, on uh, IP uh, ports. So, um, uh, if I choose uh, allow ping SSH RDP, I can uh, later access this uh, machine using SSH protocol or RDP protocol, and I can also ping it so I can check whether this machine is responding to, to ping, so I can monitor whether it's working properly. If I do not uh, act, uh, add this, uh, I, the, the machine will be created. However, I will not have access from the external external world. So just for the sake of this presentation, I will not add uh, uh, this now. I will show you how to add this later. And uh, in case of um, uh, Linux machines, and as I um, as I chose the Ubuntu, in case of Linux machines, I can, uh, I should uh, add also uh, so-called keeper, so SSH keeper. Uh, this keeper, in my case, I already have uh, one keeper uh, stored in this uh, area. However, you can also create your own uh, keeper or create as many keepers as you want. You can. Uh, at uh, keepers, uh, that is public key and uh, keeper is a combination of public and private key uh, used for SSH communication. So in my case, I will uh, add uh, this uh, key that I already have uh, have uh, stored here. And uh, having this, I can launch the instance. Uh, the instance is being built at the moment. It takes a while, depending on how big this machine is and uh, how big storage you, uh, you used. And uh, having this, Now to make it a little bit, uh, okay, I will. Okay, so having this, uh, I can see the, uh, the, the virtual machine is already created. And uh, uh, I can, um, first of all, I can log into this uh, machine using this uh, area. So uh, make it, uh, uh, access it through this console. Console. 
uh, here are here is the menu of various actions that you can perform on on the virtual machine so you can uh, access the uh, you can associate floating ip because at the moment the machine has only uh, private uh, ip uh, fixed ips uh, attached and uh, only after uh, associating floating ip the machine will have access from uh, from the external world and uh, uh, but at, if I want to just uh, see how the machine is working I can uh, uh, access it from this uh, browser so when I click on console I will see the uh, place where I can uh, make some basic uh, actions so if I uh, there are two uh, different users uh, on uh, uh, on each uh, Linux machine. One is EO console. So uh, from uh, the browser, if I log in from the browser, I should use EO console, and uh, it will uh, al always ask me for the first login. It will ask me for the uh, for entering the new password so I have to enter the password twice oh, sorry I once again okay so now, now I'm logged in as EO console uh, user. And I can uh, do some basic uh, uh, administrative um, actions, like seeing the, uh, for instance, I can see whether I have access to EO data. So if I go to... Uh, EO data and make a less. I can see that I have access to. Uh, I I can see that I have uh, various catalogs like uh, uh, Sentinel one, two, three. So all this data that is available on uh, you can see on in the Finder. You can see it also here in. Uh, in the uh, in the console, uh, the the difficulty of using this EO console is that you cannot copy and paste uh, uh, data to this uh, console. So uh, it's much easier to use the uh, accessing the uh, Linux machines using SSH. So uh, I will come back to the instances and now uh, when I attach I will try to attach the floating IP and uh, now I can uh, select uh, IP from various uh, uh, pool address pools I have also already used some of them so I will try to, uh, to attach one of them and uh, this is uh, a little bit difficult uh, for new users to uh, uh, to choose which uh, network you should use. Uh, so um, generally, you should use the private network. And uh, the difference is that, for instance, this 10, 11, uh, 10, 111, 2 is uh, your data subnetwork and uh, 192 is the private network so if i choose this one i will have an error and i need to choose the other one so this one okay so now I can see that uh, you can see that the floating IP uh, is already attached to the uh, to the 
webinar uh, virtual machine and I can uh, access it from my terminal. So now I um, open a terminal on my desktop and I can uh, try to uh, attach, the, the, I can uh, SSH to um, to this uh, address and now I use the other uh, user not EO console but EO user so these are two users all this information you can find in uh, frequently asked questions and uh, if I try to SSH to this machine uh, I will get at first, I will not, not get any response. And the reason is, and I can check uh, the other way. So let's stop it and let's try to uh, ping to this machine. And this also shows nothing. So this means that we uh, have some problem. And in our case is that we uh, forgot to uh, attach the uh, to attach the security group. So the way to fix this uh, is to go to uh, edit security groups for this virtual machine. And now I can choose the various security groups. This, uh, the other ones are uh, defined for some other um, purposes. And this one is de by default uh, uh, attached to every project. So I, but it's not it it's not yet attached to the virtual machine. So when I click on uh, plus on this and make save, then the uh, this uh, security group uh, will be attached to the uh, virtual machines. It means that. Uh, it will allow uh, pinging to this uh, server and uh, SSH to this server. So let's check once again. So let's check ping. As you can see, it is already responding. And uh, I can also SSH to this machine. It asks me for confirmation. And after this, I'm already logged in to, to this uh, server. So again, I can do a less or, uh, uh, for instance, uh, CD uh, your data and LS. And I can see the uh, various catalogs with uh, satellite products. So let's say that you want to use, uh, uh, that you want to uh, process or see uh, in your virtual machine, you want to process some product that you found uh, in Finder. So let's say that uh, this product I switched uh, to Finder. And so let's say that we want to see this product uh, on uh, our virtual machine because we have some script for. Uh, for processing these products, for instance. So here is the, mm, uh, here in product identifier is the path uh, to this product. Uh, as you can see, it's EO data, Sentinel-2, and uh, some other uh, metadata parameters. So I can copy this uh, path, uh, go to uh, my uh, terminal, and uh, uh, CD, uh, control V, control shift V in my case is uh, uh, pasting this uh, path uh, to the terminal. When I enter, I'm already in uh, the catalog showing this product. So when I uh, do a less, I can see uh, some information and uh, uh, elements of, of this product. So this is the way you can access uh, uh, satellite products uh, directly from a virtual machine. So uh, once again, you can use Finder to 
to find uh, some uh, groups of products, for instance, and then uh, you can use uh, some processing directly on on the on the virtual machine. Uh, so uh, so this was the information about how to create a virtual machine. There are many uh, options in um, in this uh, uh, so-called horizon. So this dashboard, uh, OpenStack dashboard. Uh, for instance, you can attach uh, new volumes to the virtual machine if you see that you do not have enough uh, space on the uh, on the virtual machine. You can attach uh, additional volumes. You can make some backups. You can make some snapshots. Snapshots are uh, the, the momentary uh, images uh, stored on the disk of, of the virtual machine. So when you decide that, uh, for instance, you can free, you, you want to freeze the state of the machine, you can make snapshot and then later from this snapshot, you can uh, create new uh, other virtual machines. You can see the network topology of, uh, of your resources. So if I click on network topology, I will see uh, uh, my various resources attached uh, to uh, uh, I have I, in, in this example I have two private networks and uh, various uh, for instance this webinar uh, in a virtual machine which I created uh, is attached to your data and to private network uh, external two. And uh, you can see also uh, your routers and uh, you can configure some elements of, of these routers. Mm -hmm. So these are, for instance, uh, private networks available. You can create a new private network and make some additional connections uh, between them. Uh, you can also edit the security groups. So, for instance, I will show you how the allow ping uh, SSH RDP. This is the, the this default uh, uh, group allowing access uh, from on on TCP port twenty two and uh, TCP three three eight nine so RDP and also ICMP. So uh, this uh, allows pinging the the server. And uh, there are some other elements which uh, uh, which you can you can do uh, in this. Uh, so now I will show you the the other way to uh, create a virtual uh, machine um, because this was uh, uh, done in a so-called horizon, but uh, another way is uh, do it directly from. Uh, from Creodia's uh, portal. So if I'm already logged in and uh, as here, uh, I can buy uh, virtual machines from uh, directly from, from this place. Uh, so clicking on order now. Uh, first I will maybe uh, before I will show you the place where you can check the uh, the pricing for pricing for the machine. So clicking on pricing, you can see the price list and uh, uh, inform basic information about uh, usage of uh, the uh, costs and and uh, uh, some information about uh, discounts. Uh, and here <clears throat> on this uh, table, you can see. Uh, various uh, mm, uh, flavors, so various sizes of, of the machines, how many cores, uh, virtual cores, how big the RAM, how big uh, SSH uh, disk, uh, as, as SSD disk, so mm, the storage that uh, the system, operating system is, is on, on the virtual machine. And of course, uh, uh, most of these uh, machines you can create uh, uh, with bigger uh, system storage. Uh, 
but uh, this this is the information about basic configurations you can also have a virtual machine with ArcGIS uh, and uh, so having this information you can uh, uh, order a virtual machine directly from uh, from this portal so if you click on order now you will be directed uh, to the uh, place where you can step by step choose the uh, uh, resources so uh, for instance in in this area you can buy uh, additional credits because uh, um, if you want to use the machine in paper use mode uh, you need to have some credits on your account and then uh, each machine will be created uh, will be charged uh, uh, by the time that it is running on uh, the important information is that if you want to uh, stop the machine for some time and not be charged for this you uh, you should uh, make so-called shelving. Uh, so I will show you maybe first uh, how to shelve the uh, instance because this is uh, quite an important uh, uh, function. So for instance, this webinar uh, server that uh, I created, now it is in the state of running and uh, you can see it's running for 17 minutes. If I want to stop this machine, I can choose various options. And uh, one of the options is uh, to pause the instance, the other is suspend, shelf, and you can also shut off the instance and you can delete the instance. Uh, uh, pause, suspend uh, will stop the machine however it will not free the ram and uh, cpu so the machine will still be charged for occupying the uh, computing space on uh, our infrastructure and if you shelf the machine then uh, it will i will show you how to uh, do it i just click shelf Again. No, okay. Okay, so it is it is now shelved. It shows shelved instance. And now status is uh, already shelved. So when I uh, try to SSH to this machine, uh, I will not have any response because this machine is already stopped. And not only stopped, but uh, it, uh, uh, it is not occupying the place uh, the space on uh, our virtual machines resources, so not occupying uh, CPU and RAM, it already freed. And now it will not be charged for uh, using the uh, CPU and RAM, it will be only charged for the uh, storage it occupies and uh, it does not occupy big storage, you can see uh, see it here and uh, so the mm, uh, so the disk was eight gigabytes so in fact you will be charged uh, in uh, when the machine is uh, shelved it will be charged only for eight gigabyte storage which is much less than uh, than uh, the using of the server itself so uh, so this was uh, information about how to use the machine when it is uh, in paper use mode. Uh, also, uh, coming back to this uh, buying resources from the uh, Claudia's main uh, area, from the user's uh, platform, you can uh, choose, uh, also you can buy storage, you can buy um, also uh, bare metal machines you can buy uh, dedicated servers dedicated servers are uh, have additional functionality that it has uh, special uh, local uh, disks attached so if you need uh, to have some uh, additional uh, speed uh, on 
uh, storing and uh, retrieving data uh, on, for instance, on some local cache, you can use uh, these dedicated servers because the, it, they are both uh, more powerful uh, with CPU and also uh, have this uh, local storage, which is much, uh, much faster than uh, this virtual storage um, uh, used on on uh, on the main uh, virtual uh, storage uh, area uh, and so let's say we want to buy some also small server here it will show me the price uh, per hour so in in this case price per hour is you can see here price per hour you can see the price for uh, per month and if i order this i will need to uh, perform some additional steps that's again Okay, so I will not uh, probably go through the whole process because it, it, it doesn't take much time. However, we have only six minutes uh, to the end of the webinar. So probably you have some uh, uh, questions already. Uh, I will just show you that uh, here, step by step, you can choose the uh, various elements which are similar to that uh, that I showed you uh, on creating the virtual machine in uh, so-called Horizon, so OpenStack dashboard. Uh, this is more, uh, uh, this way is a little bit more dedicated to uh, simple uh, configurations. Uh, so, so that's, I think that's it for the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, please let us know if you have any, any additional questions. Thank you.